Hi everyone, thanks for being here. And I'm very happy and thanks Dr. Khan give us the chance to share our idea and what we have done. Our topic today is using the stack architecture on security event inspection. And we are from Chemical. And Chemical is an IT security company. We develop an innovative security solution that make the world safe for businesses and customers to exchange with the digital information. Okay, this is me. I'm Darren Chen. I'm a software engineer at Chemical, and my darker experience is more than one year. And I'm also interested in some big data stacks, such like Spark, Kafka, and Cassandra. And by my side is my colleague, Evans Ye, and he's also a software engineer at Chemical. And now he's Apache Big Top PNC member, and his darker experience is more than two years. Okay, before we start our topic today, I would like to ask a question. How to make a software product? If you have experience on that, please raise your hand. Ooh. Great. But it seems a few people have experience on that. But that's okay, because this, that is not the topic we are going to talk about today. Today, we will focus on how to make a Dockerized software product. We will show our experience on using Docker in our security inspection platform. So this is our agenda today. We separate our presentation into three parts. First, before make a product, you must have a problem need to solve. So we will explain the motivation of our product and talk about what is SDACK, STAKK, and how we use STAKK to address the problem we faced. In the second part, we will introduce how Docker make our product development process more efficient. And we also bring some knowledge about security and monitoring of our Dockerized product. Finally, we will show our experience of using Docker and make a conclusion. Our t our, this talk will take 35 minutes, and I will be happy to answer all of your questions in the last Q&A section. OK, I'd like to hand this presentation to my colleague. Let's work on Evans here to talk about our system background. Yeah, OK. Uh, thanks, Darren, for introducing me. Again, my name is Evans Yi. So I'm very excited to be here. Uh, so during my talk, I'll talk about, I'll walk you through some system background and architecture stuff. Uh, motivation. So why we build this product? So this is our target scenario. Uh, in most of the enterprises, they have InfoSec team to oversight cybersecurity events happen inside the company. Uh, typically, they have a security information and event management system, which is so called SIM, to collect large amount of log and, and uh, serve the invest investigation need for them. Oxide and uh, Splunk are two typical solutions for that. But the problem is there are too many logs to investigate. And those uh, SIM platforms lack up actionable and prioritized uh, recommendations. So uh, we'd like to build a threat analytic system that has security intelligence built inside. It can collect a uh, different type, a uh, large amount of log, and do the prioritization, filtering, and anonymization. With that, we can only output valuable insight into, to the InfoSec team and uh, help them to do the uh, decisions. So this, uh, this system can significantly reduce the load for them. The system's goal is to ease InfoSec people's life and help them to quickly respond to higher priority threats. But when we were building this system, we faced two problems. The first problem is, how do we deal with customers' private data? Uh, if we build this, then this system on cloud, we need to also send customers' log onto the cloud as well. So uh, our customers may have concern if we do so because there are too many personal identifiable information in the log. So for this uh, system, we decide to build it as a an on-premises solution. 
Next problem is how do we deal with big volume of log? Uh, for example, one of our customers has two billions of log generated per day. So our system needs to be capable of handling that big amount of log uh, as well. So uh, in summary, we need to build an on-premises solution, that uh, on-premises product that can hand handle big data. So how do we do that? We use the stack architecture. It's a toolbox for building wide variety of big data products. Uh, what exactly is that? So I'll give you more detail in the following slide. So stack, S-D-A-C-K, stands for Spark, Docker, Arca, Cassandra, and Kafka. Uh, Spark is a fast and general purpose uh, big data in memory computing engine. It can serve your batch processing needs as well as streaming processing needs. Docker, I guess you guys are already familiar about it. So we, here we use Docker for software packaging, deployment, and resource management. Arca is a toolkit and runtime for building a highly concurrent distrib distributed uh, resilient message-driven application. So uh, for, to me, any business-related logic you're going to build, you are going to write a code, you can use Arca to develop it. Cassandra is a distributed, uh, highly available database designed to handle large amount of data across data centers. A nice thing about it is because of the massless uh, crossing mechanism it provided, we, it's very stable. So we, can, uh, we don't need to worry about it when we uh, put this system into customer's environment. So uh, another, another thing, the nice thing is Kafka. So Kafka is a high throughput, low latency, uh, distributed pop up message system for real-time data feeds. Uh, it's the best choice for us if we are going to build a, a real-time data pipelines. So let's stack. Briefly speaking, in our system, we use Docker for packaging, for software packaging, and we use Kafka to build real-time uh, data pipelines. Uh, we use Kafka for data preprocessing. And we use Spark to uh, support different kinds of analytic workloads. Finally, we use Cassandra to serve as a big data durable storage. So things we have the stack architecture available, how exactly is our system architecture will be look like? So this is our system architecture. As you can see, from the top left corner, we use some well-known tool to collect logs and fit them into FrontD. Uh, FrontD is a universal interface to uh, receive the arbitrary type of log. Uh, FrontD then passes the log to Kafka and stores the log down to disk immediately. Then we use Arca to fetch the log from Kafka and do the log transformation and some additional information lookup on the fly. Then the processed log will be stored down to Kafka and Cassandra, respectively. Uh, Spark then fetches the log from two systems and produce valuable insight into a relational database. So here we use PostgreSQL. Uh, depends on whether you are running a streaming, streaming workload or batch workload. Uh, the system will fetch the data from Kafka or Cassandra. So uh, finally, an API server and a web portal works together with the database to serve the investigation need to the InfoSec team. And since we have adopted the stack architecture, we can go further and darklize each every components we have been used in our system using the microservice strategy. So uh, after we, we do so, our, the deployment and measurement of our system becomes su super easy. Again, since we have adopted the stack architecture, our system can be easily fit into medium-sized enterprises, and we, we can scale it out to fit into large enterprises. 
For those very large company, our system uh, can also be deployed onto an existing infrastructure as a service or platform as a service solution, uh, such as Mesos or Kubernetes. So to conclude my part, with Docker, a system is easy to scale, and we can uh, build it and test it once and run it everywhere. Moreover, the system is widely supported by many other platforms. So these three items are key benefits from the architecture perspective. But uh, we, we, there, are a lot of, there are many other benefits when we adopt Docker in our system. So here I'd like to hand over to Darren, who will talk more about benefits when we adopt Docker. OK, thanks, Evans, for talking about our system background. Next, we will move on. Why we need to Dockerize our system? In fact, we got a lot of advantage of using Docker. So the following, I will use four phases, deploy, develop, test, and scale to explain how Docker benefit on our product. OK, let's get started with the first one, deploy. As mentioned before, our system architecture is complex. There are many components in our system. If you want to set up this kind of environment, you will waste a lot of time installing components, such like Spark, Kafka, and Cassandra. And after install, you also need to configure each component. So the long process of installation makes users and developers suffer. And in addition, such a complex system is it's very hard to operate and update. However, when we darkize our system, the previous problem is gone. Each component can be properly installed and configured into darker images. It will reduce a lot of time on installation and let's be easy to set up our threat analytics system. We can illustrate our system at system layout by an easy to read YAML file and use Docker Compose to operate our system in one command. And leverage on Docker Hub, we can quickly and easily update our customer side thread analytics system component. For example, as Chen Michael published a new version of API server to, to the Docker Hub, our customer can pull and update the latest API server directly. Since we darkize our system, the deployment becomes easier. It will help our team member to develop their applications and algorithms in a more efficient way. So next, let's look at how will Docker benefit on the development process. Docker provides two key features to make our daily development more efficient. One is reproducibility. Second is flexibility. OK, first, I will explain the reproducibility in our Spark streaming job development. We have constructed a dev cluster which provides our team member and environment to test their algorithms. In dev cluster, the data is streaming from our company data source, and it never, and it never stop. Now. If you run your Spark streaming job on dev cluster, and after a while, you find your job failed, it will be hard to troubleshoot because the data is streaming. You cannot reproduce the problem again. However, the problem could be solved by Docker because our development developers can set up the threat analytics system in their local environment easily. In addition, they can use the same snapshot data set so they can test their algorithm in their local environment. And once they find their job fail, they will be able to reproduce the environment and troubleshoot their algorithm easily. Moreover, we can, we can control the speed and amount of streaming in in our local environment to improve our, our algorithm quality. For example, we can increase the data input rates to test 
if our algorithm can deal with them in time or not. So when we do the Spark streaming job, we can quickly launch the threat analytics system in our local environment and test our job with the same snapshot data set. Once we found our job failed, we can quickly reconstruct another new local environment for testing after we fix the problem. So leverage on Docker, we can quickly reproduce the problem and speed up our development iteration. Next, I will explain how Docker flexibility makes us to achieve hybrid architecture and make the data research become more flexible. Let me talk about the background first. In our team, there are some data scientists doing data research on the dev cluster because they, they need the real data. But the result of their algorithm may not to be stable enough during the POC stage. So it, will, it may pollute our database content then affect other team members' job accuracy. For example, if a data scientist submits a job to the dev cluster, the result will be stored into our database. Once the result is incorrect, it will pollute our database content. After that, if someone submits an other Spark job to the dev cluster and use the database content as a data source, he or she will based on the pollute database and generate the wrong result. Leverage on Docker, we can construct more flexible architecture to solve the previous problem. Our developer can set out their threat analytic system in their local environment, and then still submit the job to the dev cluster. But finally, the result can be rolled back to their local system directly. It means that the developer can use the real data and system computing power on dev cluster, but no need to worry about the incorrect result will mess up our dev environment. What's more, we can control any architecture based on the same concept, which means developer can have different combination with our dev cluster and local environment. For example, the front-end engineer can do web development in their local machine with our dev cluster, API server, and database content. So they can test with the real data and without maintenance effort on other components. I have mentioned the deployment and development. Next, let's move on the testing part. For QA team, there are two important things. First is clean environment for test. Second is consistent with the production environment. By using Docker, we can meet these two requirements easily because we Dockerize our system. So QA team can launch a brand new testing environment for each integration test quickly, and no need to worry about the other possible environmental factors may impact on the testing result. In addition, all the dependencies are wrapped into the Docker images. So we can make sure each integration test environment is the same as the production environment. The last part of why Docker Live session is scale. So next, I will talk about how will Docker benefit on the scalability. First, in our threat analytics system, there are many components which are distributed software, such like Spark, Kafka, and Cassandra. By using Docker, we can quickly compose cluster with this component because all the dependencies are packaged in, into Docker images. Another case is we leverage Arca Toolkit to achieve a microservice scalability. Arca is a high-performance concurrency framework which helps us to construct a distributed cluster easily. So let's take a look on the workflow of our Arca cluster system. In our Arca cluster system, we adapt master-slave architecture. For example, the client sends a request to the master for querying about account information. 
the master will dispatch the job to the LDAP, LDAP service. And LDAP service will query LDAP server to get the account information. After that, LDAP service will, re will send the result back to the client. In our Gaka cluster system, we have built out a lot of microservice, and each microservice has its own tasks. So when different kind of jobs sent to the master, the master will dispatch each job to the corresponding service. And we also darkize each Akka microservice, so it will, let, it will make us easy to operate and up, easy to operate and set up our Akka cluster system. In addition, when some service hit their capacity limit, we can quickly scale it up. For example, in our Akka cluster system, we have a data process service to normalize our input logs. So if there are too many logs streaming into our system, the data process service will not be able to deal with them in time, or deal with them in time. So we can quickly scale our data process service to solve the problem. I have introduced how Docker benefit on our product development. But don't forget, when you ship your Dockerized product to your customers, you need to take care about security. So next, I will show you our experience on Docker security. As our survey, from Docker first release to now, there are a few vulnerabilities in Docker. So far, the most dangerous vulnerability was fixed in two days. This means that there are a few security issues in Docker itself. So what will make your Docker's product become insecure? It's misconfiguration. This is an example. When you set out a strong cluster, you may need to open the network port of your Docker daemon. But do you know, this action may be allowed worldwide to access your Docker engine, because many people just forget the network SEL settings. Actually, in the Docker website, they already remind you to set out your network security rules. And as Chen Michael study, we found that there are a lot of Docker registry in the world can be accessed without any authentication. It's easy and happy to use the Docker, but when you get into the misconfiguration, it will make you become unhappy. So how to prevent this disaster happen? Some E6 tool can make your Dockerized product become more secure. So next, I, I will introduce a couple of useful tools. First is a Docker bench for security. It's a shared script, very easy to use. It can check your host Docker daemon container settings. So you can check whether your Linux version is greater than the minimum requirement or not or check your Docker configuration file or directory SEO settings. In the container runtime, it can check if you use the privileged container or not. Second tool is called OS Clear. It can do the further analysis for your Docker images to check if any vulnerability package you have installed. The protection ability is based on Debian, Ubuntu, and Red Hat vulnerability database. And actually, Docker has announced a new security service recently. If you already use the Docker Cloud service, they will do the vulnerability scan for your Docker image to make sure your Docker image are secure enough. So finally, let's talk about how to do the monitor on your Dockerized product. We adapt C Advisor, InfraDB, and Grafana to compose our monitor stake. C Advisor is responsible to retrieve the CPU, memory, and network usage from each containers. Then store this metrics to the InfraDB. Then Grafana get the metrics from InfraDB. Then user can use Grafana web portal 
to monitor each container system status. And the monitor state is not only used in the container system status, but also in the applications. We send our Spark Kafka application matrix to our InfraSDB. So we can use Grafana Web Portal to monitor ma many kinds of application metrics, such like Kafka data input throughput. However, when you use your, when you, your container use the host network, and you also have a multiple network card on your physical machine, the C advisor won't be able to send the correct network usage to the InfraSDB. Therefore, we use the Telegraph as a solution for this problem. And Telegraph is the agent to collect metric data and store them to the InfraSDB. So we use Telegraph to collect the old network card information from C advisor and store them into the InfraSDB. So we won't miss the correct one. I have finished the Dockerize security and monitor. At the end, we will show some experience of using Docker and make a conclusion for this talk. Let's talk about the lessons learned during Dockerize Outthread Analytic System. Among the staff, you may change it frequently to your Docker containers. For example, in the beginning of Dockerize Outthread Analytic System, we found that we need to change our configuration frequently. <coughs> So my suggestion is, in the beginning of Dockerize progress, mount the whole configuration file to your Docker container. So you can change and apply the new setting efficiently without rebuild your Docker images. This is our use case. In our thread analytics system, we use a lot of open source components, such like Spark. And in Spark document, you can find that there are a lot of configurations can be adjusted by the workloads. However, in the beginning, we still don't have the proper settings. So we need to change our configuration frequently. Once any ch configuration change, we need to rebuild our Spark Docker images and deploy it again. Therefore, we can mount the configuration file to our Docker containers to solve the previous problem. We can directly modify our configuration files on the host machine and apply the change to the Dockerized component. So we are able to deploy different settings quickly and speed up our development process. At the end, let's, let me make a conclusion for this talk today. Summarize the main point again. First, we use four phases, deploy, develop, test, and scale, to explain how Docker make our product development more efficient and speed up our development iteration. Second, the misconfiguration may cause a security issue in your Docker content, in your Dockerized product. So you can use existing tools like Docker Bench for security or CoreOS Clear to secure your Dockerized product. Moreover, you can leverage on Docker Cloud Service to secure your Docker images. Finally, the monitor stake, C Advisor, InfraSDB, and Grafana can enhance your product's visibility. In the beginning, we mentioned we, want, we would like to solve the problem with fast. We need to build an on-premises product which can deal with big data. By leveraging Docker, by leveraging Docker major benefits, build, ship, run, we have now built an on-premises product which can deal with big data. Docker makes the problem of dealing with big data become simpler and also let the procedure of composing an on-premises product become more efficient. So, Go ahead, Dockerize your product and enjoy your Dockerize journey. Okay, let's see. Thanks for your attention.
And if you have any question, we will be happy to answer them. Thanks. So, sorry. Uh, sorry, can can you speak that? Okay. Do you have a reference of your project on GitHub? A reference also. Do do we have the reference of of our project on GitHub? No, we don't. Since we are building a product for our company, so currently we we run many many POCs with some um, uh, customers, but we we don't doesn't have the product released yet. Okay. As, 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 sorry, can, can you use mic? Sorry, I can, cannot hear you clearly. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so one thing I was wondering was, did you use uh, all the components of your system services? Did you build a custom image on your own, or did you use something from the hub? Like, for example, Kafka. This, like, if you search in the hub, Docker hub, there's a bunch of images. So okay, I was just so curious, did you build on your own, or? Yeah, so the question was, uh, do we build our own images, or we use some existing image on Docker hub? Is that the question? Yeah, so uh, most of the image we build it uh, ourselves. So we even build a base image uh, from scratch. You know, you can build a base image from uh, the scratch, which is an empty image. Uh, we do this because we want to ensure that every piece of the uh, binary is uh, secure enough. So we build our base image, and we put uh, components on top of it. So for example, Spark, we put, uh, we put a Tabo, uh, which is downloaded from the Spark uh, website, and we check the uh, MD5. So then we uh, uh, untarn it into our, our image file. So that becomes a Spark uh, image for, for us to use. And for the rest of the components, you know, we do it in the same way. Yeah, did I answer your question? Yeah, so uh, I guess you, if you, uh, just, you just want to try out each, every uh, component, we just mentioned you can go to Dark Hub. They are available there. But uh, for us, since we need to, uh, again, we need to make sure every piece of uh, binary is secure enough. So we do our own check. And maybe we, we have some internal customization. That's, that's a few things, just a few things, yeah. Okay. And, okay. How are you dealing with the uh, log normalization problem from all the different sources coming in? Uh, so uh, yeah. So, sorry. Can you can, uh, uh, log normalize normal is that normalizing all your logs from all the sources? Uh, are you doing that in your Akka layer, or how are you dealing with log normalization? Uh, sorry, I can't get your question. Yeah. So let's say I have logs coming from Cisco, from Arsys log, from whatever into your uh, RX log tier. How are you normalizing the logs and dealing with those internally later inside in your pipeline? OK, so the question was how we collect a different kind of log into our system. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, not, not only how you collect it, but are you doing any normalization on that data to be able to provide an ability for the data scientists to submit oh, no, intelligent queries? So do, do we do normalization on those different kind of data? Yeah, we do. So. Uh, as we mentioned, we use ARCA for uh, log transformation. So we have our, so this is more uh, related to our own business logic, right? So we have our own uh, log parser, and we have our own uh, interface to define, uh, 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 to do the normalization. So we can, uh, we, we, we can transform each past log, and we uh, use, uh, Actually, we use JSON to, to pass the log down to uh, every downstream uh, processing uh, stage. 
And we, we have the normalized JSON uh, key value for different kind of log. Uh, that's our uh, strategy. You gave an example of your front end developer using the whole Dockerized stack to play around with changes. How are you doing the local storage underneath Kafka, for example, on that front end developer's box, assuming they're not a Docker expert? So the question was how a front end developer to uh, deal with uh, this, uh, this our system to, uh, to continue iterate through he, or she's development. So uh, for our front-end developer, they actually don't need to take care of uh, Kafka, Spark, or Cassandra, these big data technologies. They just need to deal with uh, the front, their front-end Node.js uh, container and uh, API server. Another one is the relational database, which is PostgreSQL. So during our uh, I, I guess uh, Darren just showed you, right? We, uh, one of the use cases is uh, the developer can just spin up a, a subset of the whole system in his or she's local environment and connect to directly to an existing PostgreSQL. Yeah, so, so he or she can have data to iterate through his, uh, their development. So that is your question. So can you share some details about the persistent storage you use for your databases? Yeah, so for, uh, also the question was, uh, do we use some persistent storage for, for big data uh, components? Yeah, so for, for most of uh, our, uh, so we, 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 we just use a local directory. We mount, uh, the disk uh, into containers. So, because those big data components don't need to have uh, uh, distributed storage available, they just need to have the disk on locally on, on, on its node. And these components can form the cluster itself. Yeah, so, we just mount a, the Docker disk uh, onto the container for, each, for every big data component. You talked about scaling and stuff like that. So do you use some auto-scaling mechanism or detect something and, and then go and manually scale those containers? Yeah, I, uh, so the question was, uh, do we use some auto-scaling mechanism? So the answer is no, uh, because we are uh, build, building an on-premises solution. So typically, uh, the, clusters, the cluster size will be uh, measure before we uh, ship the, the, the solution to our customer. Or they, if they have uh, more logs, we, we can have a procedure to tell them to scale uh, the system out. Yeah, but we don't have, we currently don't have any auto uh, provision solution for that. Yeah, auto scaling, I, I mean auto scaling. We do have auto provision. <laughs> Okay, have any question? Okay. Okay. Okay, so thanks very much. Uh, our next talk is at uh, uh, 2.55. Thank you very much. That okay. was really a great talk. Thank you. Thank you.